Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates, and welcome back to my channel! I am back today with another episode of the Elm Hill City Zoo, where we'll add an animal that I sort of teased in my last episode where we built a habitat for the alpine ibex. I said to you guys that we'll build uh, in the next episode uh, some uh, for some very similar animal, very similar habitats. And of course, some of you were able to figure out and commented on my last video that we'll probably build for uh, the doll sheep and you were totally right uh, because of course today we are building a habitat for the doll ship. Doll ship is one of the animals that I had on my list uh, for animals to add to the zoo from the very beginning when I started it one year ago which is crazy. Uh, and yeah, I've always wanted to build something for it, but I sort of didn't have like a place for it and I, you know, uh, just well, was waiting for the right time simply. Uh, and I thought that this is just the right, uh, like the perfect place for it next to the Alpine Ibex in this like uh, sort of uh, temperate taiga biome uh, area of our zoo. So yeah, this animal was just perfect for this spot and I decided to build a habitat for it and I am very very satisfied with how it is looking at the end. So I did sort of like a foundation for this habitat today in my last video where we've built four an Ipon alpine ibex. Uh, that's why uh, this habitat was actually really easy to build because we've built a shelter last time, we've did all the fencing and you know uh, just a general idea of how those two habitats will look. So uh, today this is definitely a quicker build uh, which is something unique for me as you know why videos are pro like usually longer. Uh, this one will be probably more, less than half an hour which is like a success for me. Uh, this is because we were able to you know we had those things from the very beginning and I was able to use fences, use the idea basically for this habitat and that's why uh, this uh, build will be probably shorter than my usual videos. Uh, so for the uh, people who uh, sometimes complain Complain that my videos are too long. Here's an episode for you. <laughs> I delivered. So if you haven't seen the Alpine Ibex video, uh, you should probably uh, check it out. I will put the link down in the description and on the screen uh, because it will be easier for you to see how I do the how I did the fencing. Uh, what was my idea for this habitat? You also you can also see how I've built this shelter that you can see here and. Uh, yeah, just, just this video is basically a bit of continuation, but still if you are watching it without seeing the uh, Alpine Ibex, it is still cool because we'll build a lot of, you know, interesting rock formations because uh, of course I wanted to keep uh, this like mountainy style out of, you know, so there will be a lot of rock formations and stuff like that. I also wanted to the fence that we use here, I actually created in the follow deer uh, episode, so I will also link it on the description, add the link there and uh, add a link on the screen right now. Uh, if you want to see how I did the fence, because I get so many compliments on this fence that you guys love it. And if you want to see how I did it, definitely watch the follow deer episode, because we basically started that episode with creating this fence. Uh, a lot of, like I had questions if this fence is an in-game fame fence, so I guess I did a good job if you think that you know the fence is a mod or something. No, it is a custom built fence from the pieces that we have in game, built piece by piece. The basically uh, but yeah, thank you for all your positive feedback on my fences and uh, also you guys love the rock formations in the Alpine Ibex video, so I hope you like uh, the rock formations in this video as well. When it comes to uh, you liking my episodes and my videos, thank you guys so much for all the positive feedback, comments and love on my chimpanzee habitat in the Desert Adventure Park. Uh, we are able to, you know, go back to the zoo after a bit of a break. And I've built a huge habitat for uh, the chimpanzee in the Desert Adventure Park. If you haven't seen it, there's like an indoor and outdoor area and overpass 
has uh, connecting those two areas and there's also a backstage stuff so it was a lot a lot of work and thank you guys so much for loving it uh, this really means a world to me and if you haven't seen that video and would like to see a cool primate habitat definitely check this one out so as i told you guys the idea for this habitat is sort of similar to the one that we had for the anpa alpine ibex so we'll have this like mountainy slope coming down and the uh, path that is like above it so the guests get this really nice view into the habitat uh, and we'll have like those uh, the the path and the viewing uh, like between the rock formations like a fake rock formations I thought that it would be a bit of theming but done really cool it was inspired by a picture that I saw on Pinterest that I cannot find anymore uh, unfortunately but uh, yeah this was an inspiration for that I don't know from which zoo but some zoo has some sim something similar uh, so yeah this was that was my idea and this is basically what we are doing it here now it will be like a you know like a trail or something in mountains so we can take this path and go from this through this like mountainy rocky uh, path to see both of our mountain goats the bull sheep and the alpine ibex and yeah that was my idea and I hope you guys like it so to make those like little hills or mountains from the rocks I used the fake rocks and I also blended in some of the uh, temperate rocks uh, just you know to give this smooth transition uh, to, to make the smooth transition because between the fake rocks and the like real rocks that we'll have in uh, in the habitats and I think that looks so so cool when you like blend those two kinds of rocks together uh, we will also like uh, make uh, some unique twist in this habitat because I wanted them to still be quite unique from each other not to look like totally sim similar and uh, I will use some of those fake rocks uh, in the habitat as like a small hills or mountains in the real life animals like I think that would actually climb on those uh, I'm not sure but maybe they would enjoy it uh, but here uh, I thought that it will be like a cool addition like a cool uh, like something that breaks a view a bit and you know makes it all makes all of this habitat a bit more interesting the animals can like hide behind those or you know just go around them so it's sort of like making the habitat looks look more interesting and uh, give some elevations uh, inside of it and I think that it was such a cool idea to like include that thing in here so after that i will add tons and tons of rocks to this habitat because i really wanted to look make it look like a you know very mountain like alpine uh, habitat uh, that will be would mimic the natural habitat of the doll ship uh, so there, there it really must be rocky <laughs> with not too many plants and in the end i love how it has turned out many of you guys actually like loved the rock uh, rock work in my last uh, video so uh, today we repeat that so if you want to learn something learn how to do it definitely watch this video uh, this and the alpine ibex because you know this is like a quintessential rock work because of how many rocks there are uh, last time i shared with you guys a tip so maybe i will uh, repeat that that uh, it's easier to make those rock formation when formations when you uh, like adjust the lightning i mean the hour of a day in planet zoo uh, so that you get a bit of shadows on those uh, rocks because because of it you can see all the cr crevices and you know uh, the details of the rocks a bit better so it's easier to blend them together to choose the right ones that match together and so on if you do it like an in full like sun you lose those details so it's harder to make and uh, I especially love this like big flat rock I'm not sure how it is called in the game because I think that they only get like numbers so I don't know what which number is it but this very like big one uh, that is flat I use it a lot in here and I use it a lot everywhere because it has this really nice 
edge that is just like has a lot of those you know small details and crevices and I think that it always looks good in all of my builds and uh, when you have like a slope or something and you stick it out a bit it looks like you know some rock formation crazy rock formation and you don't need to do much to make it look good basically. What I definitely wanted to tell you guys here today uh, is uh, that Planet Zoo is back with its weekly steams uh, here on YouTube and on, on Twitch. So this is so exciting. Uh, I remember watching them before basically the pandemic. I think they stopped doing them when, you know, the pandemic got really bad. Uh, and now they are back, so this is very exciting. Uh, I am always there <laughs> on YouTube where, uh, where there is a live stream from Planet Zoo. Even though it is basically in my work hours, I always try to, you know, hide in the kitchen in my office or, I don't know, just watch it on my headphones or, you know, pretend that I'm working don't tell my boss <laughs> but I totally do it so I always watch them because they are so exciting and uh, you know we can talk on the chat with together with the Planet Zoo community so this is so so amazing so if you want to catch me there I will definitely be there every week uh, they are on uh, Tuesdays I think if I'm not wrong uh, so yeah if you want to chat with me on a you know, live chat and just meet me there I am always there uh, so you are welcome to join, they are really fun, sometimes they showcase like blueprints from players, you can upload your own blueprint, blueprints and send them, uh, or they just build a zoo, or I don't know, they talk about the games, which is so exciting, and yeah, really really fun, so if you want to join those, you are so 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 welcome. So as you guys probably know, the Dollship ship was a part of the Arctic pack, uh, which was the first DLC for Planet zoo and was released over two years ago which is crazy uh, to think uh, but yeah the doll ship is definitely a standout for me of this pack uh, probably my favorite animal of the pack if I'm honest um, like there was also a reindeer I like the reindeer I like that we have it right now in the game but for me it looks a bit like too goofy not too realistic uh, and I basically love the animals that look a bit more, uh, you know, like real life animals, not too fluffy and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, there was the reindeer, then we had the arctic wolf, which was cool. I like that we have it, but it was basically a wolf in another color. We already had a timber wolf, so it wasn't nothing, something like unique or, uh, you know, groundbreaking for me. Uh, then we had a polar bear, which was like s somehow anticipated. We knew that we would have a polar, polar bear, bear in the game on sa at some point, and many people were disappointed that it were wasn't in the you know a basic uh, game. Um, but we got it. I like it. I'm not a crazy fan of the polar bear because uh, you know this is just another bear and. To it also needs so much space that uh, if you want to you know satisfy its needs you have to build something super huge and it's hard when you want to detail it because you know making uh, such a huge habitats and making them look pretty and detailed and so on takes so much time that every time I've built for a uh, you know, a uh, polar bear, the habitat was basically empty and there was a lot of water in it and, you know, it didn't look great. Maybe that's why I am not a big fan of it, uh, but still I love that it was added, of course. And the doll sheep for me was a standout, as I told you guys. I love how it looks, I love the models, I love their traversable area, they had uh, the best traversable area, I think, that when they were added to the game. Uh, they could, you know, climb those very steep uh, edges, they could climb on rocks and, you know, we could build some, like, crazy mountains for them and they would, would use it. So that was such a, you know, su such a cool thing. They also look very, very realistic. I love all the details on the horns of the male. The horns look amazing, I love their eyes and you know, basically this is such a well done animal and yeah, I love how it behaves, all the animations, so this is definitely one of my, I don't know, top 15 of the animals. 
I actually thought about making a video with a like top tier for all the animals <laughs> in the game for me personally. I know that many people made them, uh, but yeah, I have sometimes like different opinions and stuff. There are a lot of animals in the game, so this video would be some probably challenging to make like a, you know, list uh, and rank them. Uh, but yeah, let me know guys if you would like to see it, if you would like to see it, I can do it, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I'll do all of the animals or maybe just DLC animals, but yeah, this is something that I actually recently thought about and maybe uh, some sort of different video would be interesting for you, uh, so let me down in the comments uh, if you would like to see it. Also, uh, in the Alpine Ibex video, I think, or in the Fallow Deer video, I don't know, but in some of them I uh, teased you guys a bit that we'll build several more habitats and we will start a big project here in the uh, Elm Hill City Zoo and this is totally right, correct. After this habitat today, I will start to work on a big, 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 big project here in um, Elm Hill City Zoo that will take us several episodes. Uh, so uh, in the ne next episode, I will reveal what it is and we'll start building something very cool that I think that you guys will like and I am very excited for. So definitely stay tuned because I think that you wouldn't like to miss it. So as you can see we already started to add the plants to this habitat, we'll have a lot of pine trees and stuff that grows like mostly on those mountain regions because I wanted to stick to that theme. Uh, we of course have a lot of grass and not too many plants but still some of those creeping plants and you know lower plants uh, that will make all of this habitat come together. I will use here uh, the plant that I love that you guys probably know by now that I love it so much, the olive tree. I mainly use it as a bush because I love the color of the leaves and yeah there will be a lot of it in this habitat. We'll also add a couple of dead trees, some branches for details and also uh, the thing that I like to add recently which is like a uh, turned over like a uh, dead tree trunk or something so you get those roots and they look like little small you know uh, dried branches or something uh, like shrubs and stuff like that that you can put inside of different you know plants smaller plants and it looks adds a bit of detail and looks so so cool so I always like to do it you could also see me adding uh, like my own like piles of frogs which I did with a uh, small rocks that were added to the game uh, with the euro pack uh, those are those tiny small little uh, fake rocks and I did like a, basically like you know my like formation of them and I use it everywhere and I love how they are looking they just look like pieces of you know rocks just break bro broke off the bigger ones and just are laying down on the floor if it makes any sense but yeah this is something that I was going for. In this video I won't show you guys how I do in the inside of the stables like the stalls and stuff like that uh, just because I did it in the uh, Alpine Ibex video so definitely watch it if you want to see how I did it. I will showcase it of course in the cinematics by the end of this video. Uh, but I won't show you guys how I did it because I just copied over the thing that we uh, like created last time. This time however I will show you a bit of decorating like around the habitat because I had some requests uh, if I can show it because you guys sometimes struggle with it. I mean you know making uh, those spaces between paths and stuff like this pretty so I uh, like included that in this video because the speed build of the of building the habitat was basically shorter so I decided to add you know this thing to show you guys how I do it like my recommendation for it is basically uh, to you know add rocks for sure those smaller rocks and stuff like that and my tip for the plants is actually to utilize this heart uh, you know feature your favorite uh, thing feature 
in the plants uh, just to you know add the heart to the plants that you normally would use in those areas because it is so much quicker just to show your just to choose your favorites uh, not to look for them and then you can go and do a bit of more cohesive things because you are making sure that you use always like similar plants uh, throughout your entire zoo and you know you can choose your favorites that work for you you know how to match them together so this tool is very very useful for that uh, I have my favorite plants that I use all the time hearted so I don't have to look for them because there are some plants in Planet Zoo that I don't especially enjoy uh, and some of them that I love so those are hearted and I always know that I am looking for a certain plan a plant I just need to click on this heart and and I will basically be able to find it so this is very very useful and if you are struggling with areas like that definitely utilize the heart it just makes everything so much quicker and easier so the speed build uh, portion of this video is coming to an end and I still haven't shared with you guys any fun facts about the doll ship. Uh, so the things that I know about them is basically that uh, the males of the doll ship, they fight a lot between each other and uh, you know the clapping or heating uh, the, of the uh, horns it is very like loud and you can hear them from very like far distances uh, and they do it to uh, to fight for dominance uh, in the herds or in the groups of them uh, the males they you know fight for the dominance and uh, uh, most dominant ones get definitely gets all of the females so it's a little bit different than you know the similar uh, animals from this you know family and so on because normally uh, the males fight over female not for dominance but here they fight mainly for the dominance but it is somehow you know connected because the more the, the more dominant uh, the male is, the more females it gets, basically. Uh, but this is not looking like that. They that they have one female and they are fighting over it. Uh, so there is a lot of fights going on between of them. Uh, the females actually also fight to get between each other. They don't have such prominent horns, but they fight over food or over a place to sleep and uh, also the young ones the children basically they also play uh, within like with with each other and they play by fighting they like try out you know uh, they learn to fight between each other when they are small so uh, this is a very feisty animal because it fights all the time between each other but but this is basically how they live their lives so if they choose to do it, let them do it. They also, uh, you know, live in very cold climates. I mean, Alaska and, uh, you know, that part of uh, the North America. Uh, so uh, it's basically so much easier for them to survive the summer and in winter they lose about 40% of their body fat, which is quite a lot because they basically there is a food shortage they have to fight over food they have to look uh, on, uh, for it uh, you know under the snow they uh, eat small shrubs and stuff like that so uh, they eat more during summer just to you know build up this this fat and then they uh, so that they have you know some storage <laughs> for winter and over winter they use 40 percent of their body fat so this is quite a lot okay guys this is all that i have for you today uh please stay till the end of this video uh, because there will be cinematic shots and you will be able to see how this habitat is looking in our zoo also uh, there will be some cinematic shots uh, sh like showcasing the uh, you know the location where we've built this habitat and this entire area that is basically now finished like finally we have this area you know this whole like big round area of our zoo finished so we'll be able to see that of course we'll soon have a tour uh, like updating you guys on the Elm Hill City Zoo so you'll be able to see how this area is looking right now 
If you enjoyed this video, uh, please consider to subscribe to my channel, uh, click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, if you want to see my future builds, if you want to see my future videos and I uh, would like to help my little channel to grow. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up down below, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video and comment down below if you enjoyed this video or if you have anything to say, to suggest and I always try to respond to all the comments so your comment for sure won't be unnoticed. Uh, thank you guys for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!